Many thanks for your time, Sayyid Jalal, once again for that amazing recitation. Inshallah, we will see you in the coming episodes. Um, we are now at the segment where we are looking into daily du'as. Um, supplications, ziyaras, du'as that um, are very famous and not so famous within mm. the school of the Ahlul Bayt. And we're kind of shedding some light on some of them um, to give you some benefits in terms of the history behind them, what they're all about, what's the meaning behind them, so that you can gain a bit of a deeper understanding of these supplications and du'as. Um, and joining us, um, as always, is Ibrahim Al-Ansari. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How's everything okay? Alhamdulillah, boy yourselves. Good, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you very again. much. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so this morning, you have chosen the ziyara of Imam Sajjah. Yes, we're living in Sha'ban. Mm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful month. Um, amazing month, actually. And in fact, I want to change roles for a second. Okay. And I want to ask you, Ali, mm. being from the land of Karbala, mm. maybe explain to the viewers mm. how Sha'ban feels like in Karbala, just so they get, oh, wow. because Sha'ban is just so beautiful mm. in its essence and in, and in the happiness it causes in people, especially those who are broken in Iraq. So maybe if we oh, can just... Bless. <sighs> Iraqis are generally very emotional people mm. um, and they express their emotions in extremities. So you have, during the, the sad times, the, the black comes out, the red lights, you know, the, the shrines are very much commemorating mm. the personality that um, people are commemorating. So it doesn't have to be Imam Hussein related. So any wafat of the of the Ma'asumin, the, the shrines itself, <coughs> they they have a commemoration. So they'll have red lights, Bin al um, they'll have the, the black cloth draped out in respect mm. or condolences mm -hmm. um, and i think it's a it's a it's a it's a symbolic thing like imam al-hussein is mourning the death of that personality so they they do things in extremes yeah. uh, so when it comes to the sad times there's a lot of lamentations there's processions people mm. are just generally sending their allegiances to the to the ahl al-bayt and the personality that they're commemorating on the other side of that when it comes to happy occasions um <laughs> everything is much more green, white, colourful, there's yeah. sweets being given around. Um, I was actually in Karbala during Sha'ban time a couple of years ago. And similarly to how in Iraq you have processions mm. um, or, or, or little like booths where people give out food um, in, in, for example, Arba'in time. In Sha'baniya time, people are giving out milk or giving out sweets. Oh. But even behind the, the place where they give out, there's a little medjus area. That is where people are clapping and they're, and they're, and they're reciting in Ashid and, and yeah. Mashallah, at every cute. single minute of the day. <laughs> so wherever you walk past, there's always some sort of medjus going on where people are just having a great time. So it's, it's a very much a smiley kind of feel good factor um, in Karbala specifically. That's, yeah. that's as much as I know. Um, yeah, it's, it's specific to Karbala and, and, and it's something I, I truly love to be honest with you mm. Because it's er, Iraq itself, um, let's just say it's, been, it's, it's never been safe from sadness and sorrow yeah. Literally as a country it's, it never has mm. been since, since early history till mm. today um, So to see that is, is just beautiful and, and the thing is you find it mostly in Karbala just because um, the Wiladad during Sha'ban yeah. seem to gather everyone in that land mm. um, and even those who, who participated in a way such as Imam Zain al-Abideen and even those who will participate such as Imam al-Mahdi who we will come to um, probably very soon inshallah mm. so this whole idea of, of joining Sha'ban really attracts me but then what attracts me even more is that those who were born in this in this month, not only did they hold a message, but every single one of these wiladat played one of the biggest roles in the message of Ahlul Bayt and in the way it was portrayed and in the way that they are remembered. And some even had to use some sort of strategies to make sure that they could do this specific act. One of them being Imam Sajjad. Imam Sajjad he probably lived during one of the most oppressed yeah. periods during the whole periods of, of Imamat. Um, Imam Sajjad, uh, for example, he had to live during the time of Muawiyah. May Allah take away his uh, mercy from him. And during the time of Yazid. Imam Sajjad, he had to live in the first year of Yazid, the killing of his father. Mm. And in the second year, the attack on Medina, where he was 
the attack on the Hashimis in Medina. Yeah. And on the third year, he had to live the attack on the Kaaba. And seeing the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being attacked is not easy for an Imam. Yeah. Mm. Not easy at all. But yet, and, and of course, after Yazid, the other, the other Khalifas that came did not show the Imam, just like any other Imam, wasn't shown any good time, but specifically Imam al-Sajjad, it was so difficult for him, such that it was even difficult for him to go out and speak out. Which is why you will not find sermons of Imam al-Sajjad. Mm. Very little, if not any. Mm. Rather you'll find du'as, you'll find supplications. That is what you will find from Imam al-Sajjad. And that was the strategy that he used, which is where we get Sahif al-Sajjadi, okay. for example. Okay, okay, yes. So he taught his Shia, okay. and he sent the messages towards his Shia through nothing but du'a. And that was the strat strategy. That the Imam had used. Brilliant. Brilliant. Fantastic. So, um, what, should we go on and recite? Yeah, you want to? inshallah. This what? is the ziyarah of Imam Sajjad. Um, this is the whole ziyarah mm. of Imam Sajjad. A, 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 um, but as short as it is, I think it simplifies the personality that he was and it simplifies his main characteristics, let's say. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك يا سيد الساجدين السلام عليك يا زين العابدين السلام عليك يا حليف الحسرات السلام عليك يا ذا الثفنات السلام عليك يا صاحب العبرات السلام عليك يا أسير الكربات السلام عليك يا أعظم آل العباء السلام عليك يا ابن خامس يا أصحاب الكساء السلام عليك يا ابن سيد الشهداء السلام عليك يا عماد الأتقياء السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Four words that yeah. you mentioned that really personify who he was as a character mm. and what actually happened to him. Because um, you're looking at Aslamu Alaikum, Ya Khalif Al Hasarat, Thafanat, Abarat, and Kurabat as well. Yeah. Um, so tell us a, a bit more how, about how this, this okay. supplication kind of. So, first of all, um, it starts with the, the characteristic of, of Imam Sajjad of being Sayyid al Sajjadin. Mm. Um, the Sayyid is, is the master or a leader, or the one who is best at performing sujood of those who uh, perform sujood towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it says, Assalamu alayka ya zayn al abidin This comes from the word zina. Zina means... Um, uh, ornament, we call it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, the ornament of those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it says, this is the one that you underlined, Assalamu alaikum ya Halif al Hasarat. Mm. Peace be upon you of the one who participated or is a participant of constant unhappiness and sorrow. Mm. And here I stopped for a second and I thought, yes, the Imam was oppressed, but why is it constant unhappiness and sorrow? And then you come to a, a narration. Where you have Abi Hamza Thamali asking Imam al Sajjad that why do you cry so much? Why do you cry so much? He says to him, Have you ever seen or have you ever heard of a Alawiya, a daughter of Amir al Mu'mineen or a daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu mm. alayhi wa sallam being taken as a captive before mm. the day of Ashura? And that was the cause of constant sorrow and unhappiness for Zain al Abidin. Yeah. Not just the beheading of his father. Because no. he saw the aftermath as he well. He saw the he? aftermath. Absolutely. Aftermath. And the thing is with 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 the captiveness of Sayyidah Zainab, it isn't easy. Yeah. And in fact, according to some scholars, it is even greater than the beheading of, yeah. of, of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. 
And it is also narrated that he would not have a portion of food Without or a food. drink unless he would mix it with, with his tears. And the thing is, when we say would mix it with his tears, that is to show how much he would cry on top of it. Mm. And then it says, Assalamu alayka ya the thafanat. The one who, whose uh, sujood parts, which is his forehead, his uh, palms. Uh, palms, his knees, and his toes, became sore from, from how much ibadah he, he had done. Then it says, Assalamu alayka ya sahib al abarat. The one who constantly wept and mourned, and, mm. and, and we spoke about that. Then, ya asir al kurubat. A curb is not just a hardship, it is even higher than a hardship. Mm. And it is saying that Imam Zainul Abidin, not only did he have to go through hardships, but no, Asir means he became a captive of hardships. To show that it was something that he couldn't even get out of. Mm. When someone is captive, they're in charge of the... the uh, so whoever took them in, as a captive is in charge of them. And it's as if saying hardships took over the Imam in such a way that he wasn't able to get out of them. Then, Assalamu alayka ya a'adhama ahl al-Aba, Assalamu alayka ya ibn Khamis, Ashab al-Kisa. Um, it's a status, isn't it? This, 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 who he is as a person. His position as an yes. Imam. Yes. Yeah. And Sahib uh, Khamis, Ashab al-Kisa, referring to uh, Imam al-Husayn alayhi wa sallatu wa salam. Then he says, Assalamu alayka ibn Sayyid al-Shahada, again Imam al-Husayn. Assalamu alayka ya imad al-Atqiya. Imad is pillar. a pillar. Mm. The pillar of those who are pious. Mm. And we said piety. We've, we've mentioned piety so much before. Piety is what lifts our status and is saying he's the pillar of the, of the mm, pious ones. And then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. Uh, oh, Imam al Sajjad. What an amazing personality. You're yeah, right, actually. It does bring all, bring all of his characteristics, what, he, what he's all about, in, in one short, short kind, of, kind of supplication. Yeah. Um, I'd love to know, maybe at the top of your head, do you know of any. Any du'a that he has in his 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 works that because you mentioned as well like when it comes to um, he taught the message of the Ahlul Bayt through du'as. Do yeah. you remember the top of your head any any du'a or any any supplication in that sense where it's a bit of a message in terms of aqidah, for example, or giving advice to the to the? To in the fact, people? one of my favorite du'as, mm. du'a bi Hamza Thamal. Oh, brilliant! This du'a. Did had so many lessons in terms of aqidah, in terms of akhlaq, in terms of everything, that it is honestly a many lectures and lessons and lessons yeah. and lessons in one, yeah. where he would even go into detail about your state in the grave. Yes. Not before even getting to the grave, he goes into detail about how your soul is taken away. Yeah. From your body, and and th there aren't many le uh, lectures or lessons or mm. or let's say even speeches about about how this this happened. No, no, he describes it in the du'a in his manner, in mm. his manner. He describes how it is taken out of the body. Then he describes the state in the grave. He describes in 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 one of them. He talks about how how we form a bond with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He talks about. How um, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we make dua towards him and how he forgives our duas. Mm -hmm. All parts of aqeedah. So Imam al-Sajjad alayhi al wasalam, he has this specific dua, dua bi Hamza al-Thamali, which is one of the most amazing duas that even some of those who came to say that this dua does not even have any senate, mm -hmm. the scholars replied by saying, that even, even if we do not find a single narrator, even if we do not find a single narrator, because of what this dua includes of words and lessons and wisdom, we know for a fact that it comes from a ma'asum. Because I was going to say, you could tell the language. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Just like in dua al-sabah that we mentioned, yeah. I think about two episodes ago or something like that. The language used, yeah. impossible for it yeah. to come for anyone but Amir al mm. Likewise, with this, impossible to come, Dua bi Hamza Thamali, impossible to come from anyone but a Is he also the author of um, Dua Muqamal al Akhlaq yes, as well? Yes, he is. Yes. You read that? 
Yeah. I, which is a it's beautiful. one of those shameful moments where I've, I've alluded to it, but I haven't really. It's a very powerful um, for lessons, spiritual lessons, um, yeah. and amazing. Um, so he's done some beautiful works, and, yes, and yes, his du um, dua on, uh, for Arafat Day. Other than the amazing. fact, other than the fact that he even has uh, the literally every single right. Yes. He has he, Gosh, he has yes. he has gone over even the rights of oh, yeah. Of, yeah. of a son upon their father. Definitely. So a lot of people, for example, many might come and say Islam just tends to put the father on top of the son. Well, that, yeah. that's how it usually is. The father knows better for the son, etc. But the son also has rights upon the yeah. father. One of them being that a my right upon my father is that he gives me a good name. Yeah. And funnily enough. In some of the other rights that he mentions, some mm -hmm. of the other rights that he mentions, you will find that this Human Rights Act that came out in yeah. 1998 or whenever it came out in, you'll find that it is found in much better detail and in much better words from Imam Sajjad mm. from 1400 years ago. Yeah, yeah precisely. And it is the best way to live our lives and it is the best way to know what to expect from others as well. Precisely. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Another Thank brilliant so um, explanation and a recitation. Yeah. Um, pray for Allah to give you. you more tawfiq. Inshallah. Inshallah. Like yourselves, Thank inshallah. you so much. Inshallah. Brilliant. On that note, mm. Zara, if, you, if, if I may, um, on the next part of the episode, we are kind of taking a deep dive into psychological issues um, with um, Barack Hussein. Um, and so Zara will take lead on that. Uh, that's after the break. So we will see you very soon.